Leishmaniasis are infectious diseases of great importance in the Americas. It's a zoonosis caused by the parasite Leishmania and is transmitted by the phlebotomist sandfly to animals and humans. It appears in different clinical forms, mucosal, visceral, and cutaneous, which is the most prevalent one. How do you recognize a cutaneous leishmaniasis lesion? The sandfly bite produces an edema, which evolves into a macule, a papule, a nodule, and frequently an ulcer. In case of clinical suspicion, the diagnosis should be confirmed by the direct smear test, which is available at primary healthcare services. The early diagnosis and treatment of cutaneous leishmaniasis can reduce the mucosal form and potential after effects. Visceral leishmaniasis is the most severe clinical form of the disease because it can lead to death. How to identify it? In this case, the parasite invades tissues and organs. The most frequent signs and symptoms are fever, weight loss, and a distended abdomen. In case of suspicion, it needs to be diagnosed with a rapid RK39 test and bone marrow aspiration. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, the most appropriate treatment option for the patient should be chosen. There are specific recommendations for each clinical form of the disease, and you should follow the protocols established by your country. Exactly. There are local treatments for cutaneous leishmaniasis when the criteria for its application are met. Otherwise, the treatment should be systemic. For visceral leishmaniasis, the use of liposomal amphotericin B is recommended as the first option because it's safer and reduces the treatment time. Six months after the treatment has been completed, if the patient with visceral leishmaniasis remains stable, she or he is discharged. Do not forget that the patient should be examined every three to six months for a period of two years. In cutaneous leishmaniasis, it's common that, during the first half of treatment, the lesions don't reduce or even get bigger. However, this doesn't mean that the therapy failed. At the end of the treatment, before giving clinical discharge, we must wait up to 90 days for the skin lesion to be completely healed. After that, we must follow up until completing six months. If the lesion doesn't heal or gets bigger, we must evaluate the need for a new treatment. We have further information about leishmaniasis in PAHO publications and in the virtual course that is also available. Timely diagnosis and proper treatment make a huge difference. I am Dr. Laura, and together with the team, we seek to make these diseases visible. I invite you to be part of this team.